Can you... <gasps> Fire! Most haunted head into a fortress that's full of splendor and suicide. The door's just closed. And this is Most Haunted. Today, we head to Northumberland and to an impressive but equally haunted location. Welcome to Bamborough Castle. Northumberland can boast many fine castles and Bamborough is no exception. Against a backdrop lined by the stark and stormy waters of the North Sea, this enormous nine-acre site originally housed a far smaller timber construction. This, the Norman Keep, dates back to 1120, and with so many wars having raged ever since, it's not surprising that numerous monarchs hold an association with this castle. However, early in the 19th century, a charitable trust set about restoring Bamber to its former glory. And as a result, the castle has since acted as a school, a World War II HQ and hospital. And it's this role that may well lead us to Bamborough's most prominent ghost. As I drove down the road and saw Bamber Castle, I don't think I've ever seen such an imposing place in my life. I'm absolutely full of trepidation already and that's before I've even started. There's been life on this site for over 7,000 years. And where there's life, there's death. And where there's death, there's stories of ghosts. The ghost of John Sharp, who renovated the castle, has been seen wandering along the gallery area. The ghost of a woman has also been seen in this particular room, along with the fact that camera equipment likes to fail here on a regular basis. Lucky for us, though, so far, so good. There's certainly been a castle on this site since the middle of the 6th century. It would have originally, of course, have been a wooden stockade and then a castle. Uh, it was the, the seat of the kings of Northumbria and was visited by many English kings. Edward I, Edward II, Edward III, Henry III, Henry VI, King John, all came here. And it's always been a very strategic castle in the battles between England and Scotland there's an awful lot of death that's gone on around this building. I've seen a couple of ghosts and I get stories from other people, including mediums who visit, uh, children, school teachers even. Well, sometimes you see the pink lady, if you're lucky, because she's said to be stunningly beautiful. And I missed her by five minutes once, so I'm still a bit peeved. And uh, I've seen Dr. Sharp, the first restorer of the castle, and a soldier in English uniform of the 17 or early 1800s. Um, and for the girls, he was quite good looking. Sometimes you hear noises, maybe, a baby crying here and there, uh, children running up and down corridors where there are no children in the house, and uh, things like that. There was even a piano playing ghost, I'm told. Many people don't like being in this particular area of the castle, which is situated just by the library area. People often complain of feeling physically sick. Some are terrified, hysterical, and many people have actually fainted. Dark, eerie shadows are also seen here, and people complain of being touched by unseen hands whilst looking at the pictures. During World War II, when the castle was used as a hospital, a young male patient shot and tragically killed himself. Since then, his ghost has been seen sitting here at the bottom of the stairs. Cold spots are often felt here, and many people report a small, cold, icy hand trying to hold theirs. All this happens in the Tapestry Passage. 
Matthew Smith is our parapsychologist on this particular investigation, and after spending just an hour or so on site, he's already aware of what to expect from this huge and impressive location. Matthew, this place is absolutely enormous. And what fascinates me is, I don't think you can actually get away from the fact that so many people over the years have heard things, they've felt things, they've seen things. So what's your response to that? I mean, they can't all be imagining the same things. Well, this is what's, what makes a location like this absolutely fascinating. It has got so many different experiences of different types. So it's not easy to explain them away in terms of, oh, well, you know, maybe it's all explained in terms of drafts, or there's one simple explanation that can explain everything. So what we're going to look at is, is what we're going to do is take a look at all these different kinds of experiences and find the different ways in which they may be explained. Because, of course, a big part of my job as the parapsychologist is to try to find ways in which the, they could be normal explanations and find out if we can rule those out. If, it's, if something's left, if we've still got an effect, then maybe that's paranormal. But the fact we've got so many different kinds of experiences and so many different types of effects to look at gives us a lot to go on. How would you um, cope with uh, the fact that one particular area is a landing um, in a part of the castle and p lots of people have been known to become hysterical, they feel sick, some people have fainted. Why do you think that could be? Those kinds of experiences are particularly interesting because we've got to look at the psychology of the people who are having those kinds of experiences. If, for example, they were a, 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 a members of a single group, then, of course, hysteria can help explain that, in that if one person has the experience, it can just start setting off this, a similar experience in other people. Nothing paranormal going on. If there's lots of independent people having these kinds of experiences, then there may, of course, be something about that environment. Could be paranormal, could be a perfectly natural explanation, and that's something we need to focus on. And as we stepped inside, we wondered if Bambra Castle would welcome us with open arms or with more positive proof of paranormal phenomena. I know it's an obvious thing, but it was just the ego in me. <laughs> but I want to stand here um, and acknowledge this work. But that, no, it's not me personally. I'll, there's someone making me want to stand here and acknowledge this work. It, it's the building rather than what's in it that I want to acknowledge. Who's this someone? It's a male. He looks... Um, quite modern, because you think this would be, I mean, you know, castle, medieval, mm -hmm. whatever. He's, he's much more modern than that, about 17, 1800s. He's much more, though, I would say, an architect or a builder rather than an owner. He doesn't feel, he doesn't feel like a, a, an owner because he, there's a slight, I can, I can usually tell if they're subservient or if they're pompous, right. you know, and he's not pompous. Um, and the name I'm getting is John. Mm -hmm. John's the name I'm getting. Do you get a surname with him? I can't get one at the moment. It's um, Dr. John. Oh, right. Dr. John. He's got one of those very pallid, pale faces. He's got a very pale face. And he's got a little bit of face furniture, facial hair, but not, it's not like a full beard or anything. Right, so it's sideburns. Quite, yeah, right, long, right. Quite long. And again, that's given me kind of time-wise. So, well, so if you had to estimate an era or an approximate time period. Okay. Yeah. Um, can you tell what he died from? Does that come over to you? I d well, initially, um, I got sort of old age and too much good living, and that's, that's what they said to me. So an early and by all accounts harmless encounter with just one of the people who held this coastal castle in high esteem. But would all of our links to Bambra's past prove as austere? One particular woeful soul would soon inflict a hint of their torment onto Most Haunted's investigation team. Bambra 
Kessel divides and defends its villages from the chilling and insufferable North Sea waters, in a similar vein to those who tried to besiege this fort throughout its long existence. Yet David Wells has so far felt just one astral, a man who simply stays out of love for this building. This, though, was to prove a turning point as we approached one particularly active area. I feel a bit nauseous coming from here. Do you? Yeah, I don't like this spot here. And it, it feels colour wise, if I'm, you know, because that's what they're using colour. It's, it's very black, it's like black shadows. So that would indicate what black shadows? It, I am, I am, I'm going to say what, I, what I'm thinking. It, it sounds more suicide to me than it does a push or shove or a killing or an accident. I, the, the, I, I really feel it's that dark. And you feel that this particular area here is where the body landed? Someone landed, yeah. It feels okay. like someone landed. All right. That's interesting because Earlier on today, I did a, a, a piece to the camera to explain that many people have actually felt um, sick, and I know Richard Felix will back me up on this. Uh, if, yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. It's yeah. a very, very active spot. Yeah. It is like a dark channel of energy. Now, that's not a being, that's not a person. It, it's a channel of energy. So it's, it's different. I mean, I've, we've experienced this a couple of times before where there's been something that's just left a black impression. Yeah. Right. There's, also, there's also no recorded um, murders or suicides that have taken place here, but you are not the first medium to come to this spot and sense something happening on this staircase, that's someone just, dying where you're standing. Just, yeah, so, yes. so although it's not recorded, doesn't mean to say. No, exactly. Okay. All right, do you want to go through into that room? Yeah. With Richard confirming the previous eyewitness testimony heard in this part of the castle, David leads us into the tapestry passage, a narrow corridor that was about to defy its subtle appearance and reveal another man who's thought to have suffered within Bambra's fortified walls. Sorry, I'm going to have a moment. Just don't mind if I have a little... A little, little distressing moment. Sorry, Matthew. Oh, go on. Um, I apologise. Um, there's a, a man on the stairs. Um, again, a suicide. Um, and you know, something I feel very strongly about is is war and the nature of war and the uselessness of war. Um, this is a, a. He's really strong. He's really strong, which is why it's affecting me emotionally. Um, it's a World War II soldier, and he's um, uh, he's killed himself. He's shot himself, I think, in the head. But he's shot himself here. Here. In this building. Right. Okay. Which doesn't make much sense, really. So this is completely different from what you've experienced down there. Absolutely, completely different. And this is a complete time shift to World War Two. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Did you say World War II? Yeah, I did. You did, did you? Yeah. Um, it feels to me as if he's been convalescing. So this is possibly used for a convalescing home. And as, sorry, I know that that's probably what some of these buildings were used for. Um, and it's almost like regret. You know, some people, having, having served in the forces myself and I had friends who've been on active duty, and, and a lot of a lot of the things they sometimes feel if if you've lost colleagues is guilt, because mm -hmm. you feel guilty because you've survived and they haven't. Particularly if a, if a huge swathe of them have been killed, and there's like a dozen, or or you're the only survivor of of say ten mates, and you're the only one left. You, you know, I've heard people in life describe this this feeling that why why should I why should I live, mm. and there's kind of like that sensation with him. Why should I live? Why should I have lived? Because it's in the past. How old was he? he? He looks young. I would say lucky if he was... Lucky if he'd hit 30, to be honest. Late 20s, early 30s. And is he here all the time? I think he's grounded. Um, I think he's on the staircase active. He may be around other parts of the house. Why the staircase? Or the hotel. Because I think... There seems to be a solitude in this spot 
that he may have felt when he was here, somewhere he could get away. This place might not have been used a lot. The corridor may not have been used a lot. And it, what, I haven't got him. I haven't got him killing himself. Or that's not the image he's given me. The image he's actually given me. He's on the stairs, and if people see him, and I think they may see him, he's got his hands like this. So he's he's like that. He's sitting on the stairs, thinking about why am I still here? Okay. So that's the. If you like, that's the key pose, that's the pose that you get to, to get the story. Right. The spectre of a suicidal young soldier is strongly associated with this part of a building that did house the infirm and injured during World War II. But why should he choose to tie himself, apparently both physically and emotionally, to the surroundings in which he is said to have ended his own life? With spiritualist medium Gordon Smith having also arrived in Bambra, we could move on a step to ascertain the emotions that still resonate here. We start in the armory, a self-explanatory room with contents that Gordon is almost immediately able to translate. This is the, I can almost, as I look round, see blood dripping from them. I know they've obviously been used at some point, but I can see in my, eye, in my mind's eye, almost like these things being used to kill people. But there's, see if, see if I were to do psychometry and you take an object and it has a memory or it gives off some kind of, mm -hmm. uh, sort of residual memory. This, I feel, is what makes me sick. All these, yeah. all these artifacts? Absolutely. So yeah. that's what's, that's what's yeah. making you? And I feel as though, yes, they have been used to, there's, there's some memory about these, they, ha they, they have really been used, they're not just on show. These have been used. Strangely enough, the weapons that are in here aren't just for display. They're, they're not all from this place, some of them from the Tower of London, but they've all been used. They've actually been used in battle or picked up from battlefields. So, in other words, these weapons have killed. Yeah. And what do you think, activity-wise, what do you think we would experience if we were calling out in that corridor? There, here, I do feel as though, I do feel there's a male presence um, and it's, it's two different times I'm seeing. One, as I say, is something connected to this place. I feel quite a decent man. I don't feel anything bad about him. But I do feel as though there's something a bit more sinister. And I can't quite get that at the moment. I feel as if we sat and, and we, we try and make a more intense, okay. you know, like a seance, then we might be able to pick up on that. So there's something bad connected to him? I don't even know bad. I mean, something that's either very, that's been very aggressive, somebody who has been because there's quite a strong negative feeling, okay. I'd have to say. So in addition to Richard confirming Gordon's graphic description of these implements of war, we move through to the adjacent room, a passageway that David had earlier identified as holding a troubled soul. Do you know what? It's almost as though I just don't want to go any further. It's like, just stop. I am completely, it's like blocked. I come here and I cannot, it's like I really don't want to walk any further. What's it feel like? I just feel like sick in my stomach, really sick. This is though there's, this, this I would say would be where there would be some sort of activity. Yeah, well you're not gonna make you go in there, don't you? Yeah. Come on then. That's okay. Now I don't know about this place if there was, if it was used during the war, but I get the sense that it was, because I can mm -hmm. feel soldiers now, but current or, or modern day. Yes. Um, and, I, and I feel a lot of people brought here as a hospital or to mm -hmm. get helped. It's two different places coming from there to here. Mm -hmm. It just feels completely different now. Mm -hmm. um, and I can see different functions uh, one after the other. It's almost like, mm hmm. All right, there's somebody here who either belongs to the family, name of William, I'm hearing Colin Forward here, who connects to this family, okay. who either live here now or who did live here, mm -hmm. but that name's being called through. A man who would be, I don't know, maybe 70s, something mm -hmm. like that, died very quickly. Okay. Get the sense of his presence around. Not bad, nothing haunting, but I do pick up that spirit presence. So you think that William refers to the name of this yeah. spirit you're picking up on? Yeah. Okay. But that's that's not the bad feeling. This is just me tuning in and being able to pick up oh, right, okay. different... I mean, because, as I say, there's lots of different levels here. Mm -hmm. You're dealing with a house that has got many images that are stored in it. Um, as I say, there's images of people being helped, nurses. Does, does the William name, as you've talked about, um, I feel he connects wall. to the house. 
And you think yeah. that, that William is similar to that time yeah. period there? Okay. Yeah. And I'm trying to, I'm asking in my mind for, for somebody in the spirit world to come and connect with me. And I feel that that man has either a love for this place or he's had some connection to it. I don't know if it's rebuilding or doing something to it. And I know Richard mentioned there was new stuff done, but I do feel that he's had something to do with the, either rebuilding of the house or he's put a lot of his time into it. Okay, all right. Okay. But this area is, to me, one of the worst areas. I don't feel as sick as I did as I walked in. Why is this but area, there's why? there's something very, very heavy here. I would say people were brought here to die. I would say people were brought here either to die or to be killed at some point. With both of our mediums now confirming that we are amongst emotional extremes, we were soon able to find out more about the man that David and Gordon have linked to war. Castle staff later told us that this soldier is believed to be called Alan. This information came to light in the 1980s, when two nurses from his time revisited the castle and recognised the details of his horrific suicide. So we open our night vision vigils with a seance back in the tapestry passage. But would he still want to speak to either David, Gordon or myself? Or did he have a different manner to display? I don't know what you look like, Alan, but I'm trying to imagine what you look like in your uniform, all the bravery that you did during the war. I don't know your circumstances and I don't know why you felt the need to kill yourself. Did you kill yourself, Alan? I think you did. Please, Alan, please help us, sweetheart. I can't feel quite sick. Yeah, it's OK. Come on, darling. We won't leave here, I promise you so much. I promise you with all my heart, we will not leave here without helping you. You will no longer feel the pain, the upset and the sadness anymore. Oh, it was me, that was my, me moving. I'm sorry. Please, Alan, please, sweetheart, please talk to us some more. Why did you kill yourself? Why did you shoot yourself? Is that what you did? Did you shoot yourself in the head? Oh, oh it's OK. Oh. Get your hands on the table. Don't be frightened. What was That's it? what so we just asked for. All right. Sorry, okay. Alan. Sorry if we're startled. This could get really... OK. Shall I keep talking? Much more intense. Shall yeah. I keep talking? Yeah. Sorry, what, what are you saying? I'm saying think. this could get really much more intense because okay. the actual energy that's coming right. in through this is okay. amazing. I just want to know, Alan, why? You're so young. Why did you kill yourself? Oh. Oh. It's OK. Keep, you, keep the contact. Come on, Alan. Come just on, stay. sweetheart. Don't go. Please, sweetheart, thank you so very much. Do you feel so sad still? My well done, Alan. Oh, Alan, thank you so you much, so darling. Well. This is thank you, sweetheart. This guy was really broken-hearted. Oh, sweetheart. Oh, Some to do with a woman. Oh, was it something to do with yeah. a woman? Is it somebody that you love dearly? She was killed. Oh. Was she killed, Alan? Is that right? Was the woman that you loved killed? In the war? In the war, sweetheart. Good lad. Do you want to be with her now? Do you wish to be with her now? Do you wish to see her, Alan? Please, Alan, stay with us. Come on, darling. Come on, sweetie. We're going to have to get up here. Up, all right. okay. Come Alan. on, Alan. Oh. Thank you, darling. <laughs> He's trying to take us to the stairs. He's trying to take us to the stairs. Oh. I can't get down there. Oh, he can. Alan was here. Oh, you oh, want oh, us oh, by oh. the table, sweetie, don't you? Stairs. Really? All right. Thank you so very much. Who's on the stairs? Is nobody. 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 Come back to us. Just I know you're near us, but please come back to the table. I know you can see her. I think that's what's going on. He's just I'm reunited with her. Martha. 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 Okay. Mm -hmm. Alan, if you, I can see you with a woman. You still haven't crossed, though. Can you move the table for us? Just let us know you're still with us. Alan and Martha, can both of you just move this table as a sign that you've moved on, that you're moving on, and thank you. Thank you. Just nice and gentle. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so yeah, much. Thank you very much. That was amazing. Absolutely amazing. That really was amazing. Does.
We were all amazed with the movements that took each and every one of us by complete surprise. We'd already identified the tapestry passage's significance to the hauntings reported here. But now, perhaps, we have a reason for one tragic young soldier's reluctance to abandon the scene of his sudden death in the 1940s. Had he lost a love that singled the end of his life? The poltergeist phenomena at Bambra Castle had only just begun. Most Haunted's crew find themselves amidst the huge surroundings of Bambra Castle. But on a 900-year-old site that has well and truly stood the test of time, we knew more evidence could be attainable if we were willing to cover as much ground as possible. So we split into three groups, with Stuart choosing to investigate the scullery, Carl also heads off alone towards the armory, which left Kath and both Johns to join Gordon and I in the Bones Room, a small dead-end corner full of human remains. Right, now be careful here, because I'm sure there's wires hang down somewhere. Yeah, there is. <laughs> I'll tell you something, it's not often I get spooked. Why? Are you spooked? But I am getting spooked down here. Really? Yeah. That's not good if you're that is not good. spooked. My gut really is like... That's not good. No. In fact, there's serious stuff around here. I don't know if it's coming from all the bones, but... You will not like what the f is that? What? That was horrible. What was that? Getting... Coming from all the bones, but... You will not like... Jeez. Coming from all the bones, but... You will not like... Jeez. That sounded like a... Shh. What was that? <laughs> what was that? Down the... Did you hear that? Yeah, I did. was like a scream or something. I heard a... Yeah. Shh. Did you hear it? <laughs> what? What? Stop being frightened, everyone. I'm not frightened. Uh... Not you, I mean everyone. <laughs> Come on. That's it, right, we've got to get down. Come yeah, on. come on, let's get in the room. Come on, come on. But there's yeah, noises behind us and there's noises in front John, of us. John, give us a torch, sweetie, because I can't see. Shh, what there's the f is that? It's a moan, it's a moan. Is there anybody there? Is that the bakehouse? Holy shit! Who the hell's that? Who's, who's that? I'm hearing bangs at the moment. I'm hearing big bangs, and I'm not sure what it is. Uh, whether it's the other. Hello! Who's there? <gasps> For just. Whoa! For just. Whoa! Spooked out in here. I've not been happy in here all, all day. Yeah, these sort of you see these images, and in uh, in daylight they're pretty scary, but at night you just see shadows and um, and the shape of men. F that what the f was that? Well, I'm not running away from it. I'm going towards it. it seems to be centered around this drum. I have just seen a face. Oh my God, twice. You're kidding. Oh, don't like it. Where is it? Whoa, that is gruesome. Above John's head in that archway, I really? just saw a face, yeah. Right above his head. Can I move? Oh, that was just a face appeared out of nowhere. Is that spirit? <sighs> it wasn't pretty. But what, is it spirit? <laughs> I don't get it. I, I can't connect to anybody of it. I just looking for just skull? Like a ghostly thing. Well, basically, what we're doing is we're actually in a grave, yeah. really, aren't we? We're yeah. in a mass we grave. We are in a grave, which is, yeah. That was so real. It just 
face just Im like superimposed over the door. I just have a horrible feeling somebody is Someone's around here. Yeah, it's... I feel like something. You know, <laughs> it's, you know what I, I mean, I'm shaking in, and not of fear, but there's a, a weird vibration happening right in the middle of me that's I, I don't I feel... understand. I feel like someone's hiding yeah. behind those boxes. Do you know that is what's really... There. It's yeah. almost crouching. Yeah. But not like standing there. No, like, uh, there's that horrible eerie like, feeling of somebody waiting to pounce. Like hiding. To in give the... us a big fright, yeah. I'm telling you, that's what's going to happen. But they're watching. Is that what's going to happen? Mm -hmm. But they're staying uh, out I'm waiting. Out I'm really <laughs> anticipating because this is... I can see... I keep seeing us run yeah. for that door. I can, I, it's going to happen any second. And if that door opens or will not open quickly, oh. we are seriously... Where's that, where's that tap again? If there are any spirit people here now, please come forward. Please try and talk to us. That was really. Yvette, what the? Was my torch? What was that? The is my torch. Stop it! I'm not here to harm you in any way. Things are happening now. The trouble is, I don't know where the hell to go to now. If I go back that way, that's where the sounds are coming from. I don't know where to go. There's another doorway that way, but there's concrete steps that go up. But where I go to, I haven't got a clue, and I am I am literally, I, I'm, I'm actually at a loss for words now. I'm scared. <sighs> Can you, <gasps> The door's just closed, the door's just closed, the door's closed, the door's closed. Who the hell's the The door's closed. Hello? Someone's got a drum over there. Is anyone here? Why the f am I do that drum move? Did that drum move? Is anyone here? But what was the noise that made us really scared? That, something, <gasps> what is what that? Was that? That was a coin. No, that uh, was a coin. It sounded like a coin. That was definitely metallic. Come on, let's go. So I remember this, it's just a little office. All right. <clears throat> oh, but it's still quite creepy. What? <gasps> what? 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 Whoa, whoa, whoa. We just had another stone thrown at us. Something. It did. There's nothing there. I heard it. I heard it. Okay. I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to go because I don't feel too good. And I don't feel too good. And I feel like I'm going to be sick. I've heard too many things in here and I don't really like it, so I'm gonna fuck I didn't know. So I'm gonna go now, but I'm gonna leave it on. If you're here, show yourself that camera. Is there anybody here? If there is a spirit person here now. <laughs> right, that was that was big. That was That is serious. This is not a very good place. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> but what's causing this? It's like the old poltergeist thing. <laughs> <laughs> 
And it could be caused by our fear. The minute you become frightened of these things, things go off. We're not frightened, though, are we? We're calm. No, no, we are Everybody absolutely be cool. calm. Yeah. Everyone will be calm. Poltergeist activity had swamped our three simultaneous vigils, with flying objects threatening my group in the bones room, whilst a heavy sigh and door handle rattles had shown Stuart's more vulnerable side. And even before Carl had felt nauseous, had he captured the subtle but significant movement of a drum across the other side of an otherwise desolate room. Just a few hours remained at Bamber Castle, but what else was heading our way? I've what? just seen him. Yeah. Just behind no, you. Angel. Shit. At nearly 900 years, Bamber Castle appears to hold more than just memories of royalty and border battles for territory. We have encountered a host of paranormal phenomena so far, with a table, door and drum all separately moving in various parts of this massive building. My previous vigil had taken place in the Bones Room, and it had proved to be a very disturbing hour for all involved. And our account had only helped to entice Carl, Richard and Stuart, who head straight back there. Whilst in the next building, I join both psychics and both Johns in the tapestry passage. I, I feel really sick again coming in here. I feel funny here, it's here. I actually don't feel funny in this corridor at all. No, I do. I only do because uh, David and Dan do. Because they know things that we don't... No, I do. This is the, that, yeah. this is the corridor that I really feel most sick. I feel heady and I feel... I still feel that distress I got yeah. on my... Around I'll tell you, see, as you're sitting stress. there, I mean, I can see this, and I'm sure it's psychically or clairvoyantly, but I just see this almost like a white shadow above your head. I can feel it here yeah. on my right shoulder, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you why. This is my, my opinion. Number one, you wouldn't think you'd get bones, you'd, you'd get ghosts where there's bones because it's nothing but a shell. Mm. But these poor bastards in here were Christian, most of them, that were buried down mm. the grave, mm. expecting to stay there forever. Mm. And some bastards come and dug them up and put them in here. So you think it gets wrong now? Talk about disturbed. Well, disturbed. I feel dizzy. Which? <laughs> oh, no, come off it! What was that? Portland floor. Some, some things just dropped, hit my head. Oh, uh, <laughs> no, don't, 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 no one touch the floor so we can actually try and verify that no one, oh, anyone. I was talking to that before outside and she said something was thrown at her. No, honestly, something just landed on me. You heard it? I heard yeah, something land on the floor. floor here. It went in my hair. Richard, there's something on the floor here. What is it? Is that a tooth? Oh, no, no, no. It's a tooth. Carl, it's a tooth. No. God, I can't. It's a tooth. Is it a bonus tooth? Uh. I'm calling out to any spirit people that wish to communicate with us. What was that? It was like a really strong wind, but in the building. We're not hearing any windows at all. No. no, we're not. Oh. Didn't like that. I'll tell you something. They don't like us being in here. No. Honestly, Stu. No, no, no. They, I can't believe it. They, they don't like us. And the presence down there, isn't there? Yeah, it's as cold as cold now, but I have a, a tight band around my head. If there is a spirit person you're trying to communicate with us, please can you knock twice? <sighs> Who is that? that? Somebody is that, is right that, behind us. Is that the gentleman? Oh my god. I, I honestly I turned at the point and I just yeah, felt somebody come close. towards me. I'm just gonna shine the torch around and just to check there's no actual people here. No, it's empty, there's nobody there's in not here. There's not person here, but this is where you Oops. Yeah. 
all that again. Yeah. If there is anybody... Was that you? No, it wasn't me. Was that you? That was, that was right where you're standing. Right, right there. It's, it's his trick. What the f***? Was that you? No, it wasn't. I was didn't watching move. Stuart. It didn't move. I can see Stuart and I can vouch for him. Honestly, Matt, I didn't move. Oh, gee. Listen, chaps, whoever you are. Whoever you are. Oh, ooh, it's like a, ooh, like a band on my head. <laughs> and I tell you what, the temperature's going down. Mm. Whoever you are that's in here, and there must be lots of you in here, um, don't take it out on us. Do you feel trapped here? Are you frightened in any way? Oh, Do you feel something walk yeah. past there? I did. Oh, sorry, did that's you, really I freaked really me out. I really felt that. Ooh. I mean, look, this box is full of dead b bones mm -hmm. from consecrated ground. Mm -hmm. I have to admit, I'm not. I don't like it. I, feel, I don't feel good. You're getting such a headache down in there. Yeah. I really don't like it. I've what? just seen him. Yeah. On what? the stairs, fully I on the saw stairs. You're standing on the stairs, right? I did, just behind no, you. No, behind John. Shit. Do you yeah. want me to sit there instead of John if it's the energy? Yeah, that's yeah, please. Needed. Sorry, John. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good idea. Sorry, John. So Mike, will I try, Gordon, let me try and pump up some yeah. energy up this staircase and see if it helps you. If you're really here, <clears throat> and I think you are, please show yourself to us. Tonight you don't have to sit on the stairs with your head in your hands anymore. Oh, fabulous light. Yeah, fabulous just light. Saw light. Uh, yeah. Did you catch that in camera? Yeah. This is totally different yeah. to what we normally yeah. get, isn't it? Is. Mm. Bangs and crashes yeah. and aggression. Yeah. And this is some, it's some poor soul yeah. who's... He, he probably doesn't even understand what's happened or, you know, or what's happening to him. Oh. All right, Carl. Oh. It's awful, isn't it? I've got a headache like I've never had a meal in my life. You all right, Carl? Oh. Let's come over. Oh. Is he? You all right, mate? Mm. What's wrong? What's up? Oh, fuck my throat. It does feel it's got that presence oh. around it, hasn't it? I don't feel good <coughs> here. Oh. You sure? I've got it, yeah. I've got a bit on, yeah. Of course, I've Carl's nausea, which had first shown signs in the armory a few hours before, was to prove very real. And within 60 seconds of leaving the room, he had been sick. Carl is actually thrown up in the toilet. It really affected Carl. This and several other occurrences only cemented the entire crew's belief that Bambra does have a valid point to its claims of paranormal phenomena. But this isn't just a castle, and so we did our utmost to cover a property that covers several acres. Our investigators recorded several isolated sounds and incidents of poltergeist activity that, when examined together, make for very interesting reading. This mammoth location had provided us with plenty to ponder. A week has now passed since the investigation at Bamber Castle, and I've had a chance to reflect on some of the events that took place. Probably the most striking um, effect was the table movement. I was quite disappointed that I wasn't involved in the seance when they actually contacted Alan, the soldier who'd shot himself during the Second World War. But I'm told that the table went absolutely haywire and was literally moving down the corridor. The stairs. Trying to make it to the stairs. What was probably the most bizarre was the fact that the table seemed to get pulled away from the group. Actually, members of the group were getting left behind. So that was kind of the most interesting thing and the, stuff, the, the, the episode that probably impressed me most. There was also an incredible place um, full of human bones, skulls, mainly Saxon from a large burial ground. There was a large group of them went in there and things started happening like you wouldn't believe. What? <laughs> Oh, 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 that was really. 
And I think we need to look at there is the psychological state of mind they were in when they went into this very small claustrophobic room down the end of a very, very long corridor, down some stairs, and I think it was one member of the group just commented on the fact that if something did happen, it'd be really difficult to get out of there. And it started triggering off this similar experience amongst other members of the group, to where almost near hysteria occurred. So that, again, shows us the importance of psychology when investigating these kinds of locations. And it could be caused by our fear. The minute you become frightened at these things, things go off. We're not frightened, though, are we? We're calm. No, no, we are absolutely be calm. calm. What? Oh, <laughs> So overall, I was very impressed with Bamber Castle as a location. Lots of unusual experiences to, uh, to try and explain, and particularly the, the apparent physical effects of the movement of the table. And it's something I think we should continue to look for in further investigations. Bambra is a castle that stands tall, not only in size and stature, but also it appears in its links to life after death. Until next time, sleep tight.